Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today we are going to be talking about enclosed forms. Now this video is going to be an intermediate technique. If you're trying to find videos on how to make cups, bowls, teapots, mugs, things of that nature, that will be in the beginner's playlist. This video is the intermediate playlist and because of that, I'm not going to be explaining how to do any of those base forms. This form is to be added on top of the forms that you already have in your beginner arsenal. In this video, we're going over the enclosed form. An enclosed form is exactly what it sounds like. It's basically a cylinder and the body of the cylinder can be met any way you like, but the very top of it is usually enclosed. And there's a lot of weird techniques that you can do with this, but you need to learn how to make the base of the enclosed form first. And today, that's what I'm gonna be showing you. So step number one, make yourself a cylinder. Potter tip. If you are just moving into the intermediate phases and you're not too familiar with pulling your cylinders on a straight line yet, you know, you're one of those people who like pull more like this and your cylinder seems to flare out as you get to the top, this would be a good time to mention that for enclosed forms, it's much easier to make sure you either pull a straight or an enclosed cylinder, one that's a little bit closer together. Trust me, you don't want to have a flared out top when you're trying to enclose a form. This is going to be a little bit difficult for you if you're one of those people who have flared out tops when you pull your cylinder, but just beforehand, try really hard to pull in a straight line like this instead of pulling like this over time. This is because pretty soon we're gonna be taking all of this clay and closing everything up. And it tires out the clay, it makes it wiggle, it twists, you get a lot of friction in there, you don't want that. It's much easier to just keep it as small as you can on the top before you even pull your cylinder. From this point on, this is the part where you would usually form your body, although this is a base form for anyone who's learning it, so we're just gonna be doing it off of a straight cylinder. After you have your straight cylinder, you want to do the full choke, the six point, or the four point choke. Your choice, I already made a video on how to do all of those chokes, but we are going to be choking the very top of our clay in and pushing it inwards in order to close the form. Another little potter tip here, when you start choking, do not choke from the very top of the form. Instead, go a little bit further down. This serves two purposes. Number one, it gives you a tiny bit more clay to work with up here. And number two, if you end up tiring out the clay that you're touching, which usually ends up happening when you're doing this for beginners, you end up like choking way too hard and you end up stressing out the body. And it, that, that, that's starting to sound really wrong, but both rules apply in both scenarios if you think about it. Now, if you're good at it, this is what it's gonna look like after you choke your very first clay cylinder. For quite some time, you're actually gonna have a little bit of space open at the top here, but this is easily fixable by pulling this again and repeating the same exact motion. The trick is to not let the clay get too thin. This is why I said leave a little bit of extra clay at the top so you have more to work with. Let this little piece right here come right off, and now we have our enclosed form. This is now a completely closed cylinder. Now I know it looks a little bit weird, but this shape here is actually extremely useful to most potters. For example, I can choose very easily to smooth out this entire form and make myself what I would call an avocado form, but a lot of people just call it a boob. Getting this skill underneath your belt is a very important tool for an intermediate potter because you can do a bunch of different things with this. For example, I can put a hole in here and make a bird feeder. I can make a bird house if I make it even larger, which we will talk about later on the channel. I could technically make a flute out of this. I can cut a hole at a higher angle on this and make some type of holder for a lot of things. Even I have a couple of these on my Instagram where I just put brushes and whatnot inside these as like little placeholders instead of drawers or something like that. There's a lot of different utilities for this right here. Another one of these is you can easily cheat your way into making yourself a lidded jar like this. Now, if you listened to me earlier in the video and you left a little bit of extra clay at the top and you didn't use it from trying to choke it in and in again, you probably have a little bit more extra clay left when you tried to enclose it. And this is fantastic, this is normal. But if you push it down a little bit while also pushing a neck in right at the very top, 
you can very, very easily make yourself a tiny little handle, just like this, even decorate it a little bit. And once this dries out or gets to the leather phase, I can take a sharp implement, cut this at an angle, just like this. I'm using my pen tool just as an example. And I will have myself a very nice handle to a little lidded jar right here. It's very simple. And because I cut it at an angle, these grooves match up perfectly. This was actually the exact way I got away with making jars when I didn't want to make lids out of stuff in my intermediate ceramic artwork classes. I didn't feel like doing all that work of making extra pieces. So I just made an enclosed form, cut it at a very exact angle so that they would match up, and just ended up making enclosed forms for like half of my lidded jars. We are not going to keep this. <gasps> oh, oh, it flew away. Let's do one more of those just so you can see how I made it without the explanation. And there you go, now you have your own enclosed form. Potter tip! This is all fine and dandy, you can absolutely cut the top off like I showed you earlier in the episode and cheat your way into a lidded form, or you can sculpt it, or you can make a hole in it, make a little bird feeder. We'll discuss how to do that later on in other episodes of the channel. But for now I need you to know that if you leave it like this, you have now trapped all of the air inside of this enclosed form. And while it's an old potter's tale that if you make an enclosed form it'll explode, that is technically true and not true at the same time. You see, you've trapped air inside here. If you put this inside of your kiln without letting the air out first, your kiln, especially if you don't put it on slow bisque, will usually heat up the air inside of here and you'll make a miniature bomb that will explode not only the stuff inside of your kiln on the level that this is, but this as well. You're essentially going to be expanding the air super fast with the heat inside of your kiln. So when you're done with this and you don't want any blemishes on the pot or anything, you can do one of two options. You can either put a hole in this like this and let the air out and then smooth it back over if you don't want that little blemish right there. It smooths over pretty easily. Or your second option, which is what I usually do, is you can very easily take this off, let it dry normally, and when you're about to trim it or when you're about to morph it, just take your pin tool or whatever have you and make a hole at the bottom. This will usually, number one, let the air out, and number two, it keeps it out of sight of other people if you don't want this blemish on your work. This way, nobody will see it when it's set back down, but you still made an escape hole for the air that would be heating up rapidly inside of it and cause that small explosion. Both ways work. I have experienced both ways working, but as a general rule, you usually want to make this and just get the trapped air out of there, because when making an enclosed form, you will be trapping the air inside of this form as it is enclosed. Oh, uh, maybe he'll keep this one. No, I won't oh keep this Lord. one either. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. This is actually an extremely important form to learn. I don't consider it a, a form learning thing for beginners because you need to know how to pull a fairly even cylinder from the beginner phase or learn your shapes first in order to do this. Either that or you have to be really good at choking or really good at pulling a cylinder. And uh, your girlfriend only likes one of the because this form is going to be used in a lot of other things that we go on to do in the channel. Sooner or later, I'm gonna show you how to make a birdhouse out of an enclosed form. So that way, further on on the channel, you know how to do some of the things that I'm going to show you. But thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. If you like this kind of content, remember to click all the buttons so my YouTube overlords are happy. Hopefully you have a great day. Good luck on your next art project, and I will see you, Dirty Potters, next week. Thank you for your patronage.
Oh, hey. I'm, so, I'm sorry about my face. I'm so, I'm so sorry.